Okay, we're, uh, we're going to talk about uh, analytical strategies for finding limits. And when I talk about analytical, what I'm doing is essentially it's the algebra. And so instead of having a table or a graph or writing words like in an essay, we're talking about actually using algebra. And so when you see analytical or analyze, that's what they're typically talking about. Uh, the, our first step, your basic one, is try direct substitution. So what I mean by that is just go ahead and just plug in the, whatever value of x I give you, just plug it in and see, see what happens. Uh, number two, if for some reason when you try that direct substitution and you get some sort of crazy value, such as... Uh, some value, we get 0 over 0, which doesn't really make very much sense to us. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to try to factor and then cancel any type of um, repeated quantity, such as x plus 1 all over x plus 1. And so it's essentially what that means, it's the whole graphically. Uh, and then finally, sometimes you might come across some special trig limits, and these are just, you have to straight have to memorize. Uh, and the, one of them is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, and you just need to memorize that is equal to 1. The other one is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x all over x, and that is equal to 0. And so these are our two special trig limits. Uh, I wish I had a special way for you to derive or um, find out, but uh, you just have to memorize those. So let's go ahead and look at our first example. So we have the limit as theta is approaching pi of theta of secant of theta. So I'm just going to go ahead and try step one, which is direct substitution. And just by doing that, I'm going to go ahead and, and just plug in. And so I'm plugging in um, for theta, I'm plugging in pi, and then I'm going to plug in secant of, th of uh, from th instead of theta, I'm going to have pi. Well, it's kind of hard to remember what secant is. I go ahead and convert it back to sine or cosine or tangent, and so I essentially have pi over, and uh, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so essentially we're talking about cosine being in the denominator, so we're talking about cosine of pi, and one of the things I asked you on your packet was to go ahead and remember the unit circle, in case you don't remember, I'll go ahead and draw a quick unit circle for you. Remember the radius on your unit circle is equal to 1, so here's 1 and here's negative 1. And when I talk about pi, I'm essentially talking about half of the semicircle. So a pi represents the arc length, which is this part right here. And so that measurement, if you want to measure out that piece, piece of string and to measure that, that would be pi. And cosine, I hope you remember, is equal to the x coordinate. And so we want to see, well, this is uh, this coordinate right here is uh, negative one comma zero. And so our cosine value is actually going to be negative one. And so this is going to be equal to pi cosine of pi, I hope you remember, is equal to negative 1, while pi divided by negative 1 is equal to negative pi. Number 2, and now we have um, essentially a polynomial over a, quad, which is a quadratic all over a linear function. So I have the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 5x minus 6, and that's all over x minus 1. And I hope you can see that if I plug in 1, I'm essentially going to get 0 over 0, because I'm going to have 1 squared plus 5 times 1, which is 5 minus 6. And this, oh, this is going to be all over 1 minus 1. Well, I hope you can see that essentially I have a 0 over 0. And if you remember above, I asked you if um, for number two, if you get a weird kind of answer, a zero over zero, which we call um, the technical term for this is called indeterminate because you can't find, you can't figure out what that means. It means nothing. Zero can't be divided by zero. Uh, what you have to do instead is you have to factor. And so let's go ahead and factor this. And so I still need to, since I haven't plugged in anything yet, I still need to write my limit. I need to keep on writing my limit until I actually plug in that x coordinate at the end. And so if I factor this, I'm going to get x, uh, looks like x plus 6. That's an ugly plus sign. Uh, x minus 1 divided by, looks like there's an x minus 1. And as you can see, we can go ahead and cancel that x minus 1. And so my simplified version is going to be the limit as x approaches 1 
and I have x plus 6. Well, at this point, I can just go ahead and just directly substitute in one, plug in essentially 1 in 4x. So I get 1 plus 6, which is equal to 7, and that's the actual value. All right, number three. Uh, in this case, we're just going to go ahead and try direct substitution. And so I'm going to have the cosine of pi divided by 6. And I hope that you remember from your unit circle, the cosine of pi over 6 is the cosine of 30 degrees, and which is uh, the leg of a 30 degree triangle. So here's that 30 degrees. And so we're talking about what is this value right here. And that cosine is actually going to be root 3 over 2. We're going to continue on with number four. Assuming that a is not zero, then we want to find out what is the limit of x minus a divided by x to the fourth minus a to the fourth as x is approaching a. Well, I hope that you recognize a difference. It looks really similar to a difference of squares. And so we're going to pretend that uh, this, um, essentially we're going to take the square root of these guys. So if it's a difference of squares, that means this one of these is going to be uh, minus, the other one's going to be plus. Here's an x, here's an a. And uh, look, we're going to look at essentially the square root. Well, the square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of a to the fourth is a squared. And so here's our squares. Same is true for those guys. Well, I hope that you can recognize here's another difference of squares which can be broken up. And so I have uh, x minus a times x plus a, and that's still times x squared plus a squared. That cannot be broken up. And so um, when I factor this, essentially I have x minus a times x plus a um, times x squared um, plus a squared. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean that up so you can see what, um, what it looks like. I just want to show you what it looks like when I factor. And so I have the limit as x approaches a. And I have x minus a. And the factored form of this, again, is x minus a times x plus a times x squared plus a squared. And I hope that you can see, once again, that we can go ahead and cancel. That's what we were hoping for. And we're going to get 1 over, and let's go ahead and plug in our a. So we have a plus a times a squared plus a squared, which is equal to 1 over, well, I have a plus a, which is 2a. And I have a squared plus uh, a squared, which is 2a squared. And if I was going to simplify this, 2 times 2 is equal to 4. a times a squared is equal to a to the third. So our answer is 1 divided by 4a to the third. Number 5, we're going to find the limit of a piecewise function. And so it's a limit of, of uh, r of x as x approaches negative 4. And they give you r of x, which is a piecewise function. And so my conditions are assuming um, if x is not negative 4, then this is true. Then the function is 2x squared minus 3. If x is equal to negative 4, then my function value is 1.7. So essentially what we have going on here is a parabola with a hole. So it looks something like this. We probably have some sort of parabola that has a hole. And instead of that value right there, my point is somewhere else, somewhere up there. So that's what's kind of going on. In terms of our limits, we really don't care about where the point is. So here's our point. That's the point. We're looking at more of the limit, which is going to be the top part. So that's where our limit is located. And so we're just going to go ahead and try direct substitution and see what happens. And so we have the limit as x approaches negative 4. And we have that 2x squared minus 3. So I'm just showing you, um, this is true on the AP exam, you need to show what part of the piecewise function we're looking at. And so since we're looking at the limit portion, not the point por portion, I'm going to go ahead and write, instead of writing r of x, I'm going to go ahead and write that, um, that part in the piecewise function, that 2x squared minus 3. 
So let's go ahead and substitute in. Once again, once I substitute in, I can drop the limit and um, show my that the point, the x value that I'm plugging in. So since I'm plugging in negative four, notice my limit has dropped, and I'm just plugging in that uh, x value. And so I'm going to have two times negative four squared is sixteen minus three. Well, two times sixteen is thirty-two, so we have thirty-two minus three is equal to twenty-nine. And that is our limit. If you remember above, we had for number three, we had those um, two special um, trig functions. We had the sine one and the cosine one. Well, if you remember the sine one, it was the limit as x approaches zero of sine x divided by x is equal to one. And so if you notice, it's very similar, except for I have a fraction that's kind of right in the middle of this. My fraction is essentially five halves. Hope you can see that. Well, if it's in this form, what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and multiply our fraction times that limit that we saw. So we know that the limit of uh, x uh, of sine of x um, divided by x is, uh, as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. So since we're multiplying by our fraction, we essentially have 5 halves times that limit that um, was given to you above. Which, so we have 5 halves times 1, which is equal to 5 halves. And yes, it's supposed to be that easy. Finally, number seven, uh, suppose g of x is equal to 3x to the third minus 5. And then so we're going to find uh, g of x minus g of 0 divided by x to the third as x approaches 0. So let's go ahead and find what g of 0 actually is. Some of you already probably have it. So we know g of 0, if we plug in 0, um, essentially going to get negative 5. So when we're looking at this, we have the limit. So we have g of x of our function, so let's see here, let's go ahead and write the limit as x approaches 0 of our function, so g of x is at 3x to the third minus 5, and we're going to go ahead and subtract that negative 5, so essentially I'm subtracting negative 5, and that's all divided by x to the third. And so I hope you can see that this essentially, uh, my negative 5's are going to be canceling, And so I'm left with the limit as x approaches 0 of 3x to the third divided by x to the third. Well, I hope uh, next part we can just go ahead and cancel those values. So we have that 3x to the third divided by x to the third. And so we can go ahead and cancel. And I'm just left with 3. And that is my limit.